Hi, good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to see you all here. I hope the keynote uh, was a great start for you uh, at, for the, the AWS Summit uh, this year. Um, so before we start this session proper, I'd just like to give you like a rundown of what to expect uh, for this 40-minute uh, session. Uh, so uh, before we begin, I'd like to give you some context of why we've arranged this. Uh, move on to personal introductions and then get uh, the discussion going. So in terms of why we have organized this, uh, if you've been uh, keen uh, looking at the developments of uh, uh, cloud-related employment roles available, you would see that you know, employers around the world are actually um, looking for cloud computing uh, talent in a very significant way. And in fact, uh, a study conducted by Drought found that in ASEAN, there were 250,000 unique cloud computing related jobs from 2017 to 2020. And this was growing at a compound annual growth rate of about 20%. And out of these uh, 250,000 uh, unique job postings, about 100,000 were actually related to the AWS cloud. Now, so against this uh, backdrop, AWS wants to work with uh, educators, with government, with institutions to try and close the widening gap between uh, the available opportunities and the cloud supply talent. Okay, so this is basically why we've arranged for this session and we hope you benefit from the discussions that follow. Uh, so moving on to personal introductions. Uh, my name is Danny and I'm a program manager with the Education to Workforce team at AWS. Uh, we have two main areas of focus. Uh, firstly, we aim to skill or educate anyone who's interested in cloud computing related technologies. And secondly, get these trained folks into employment outcomes. So that's basically what uh, our team does. So uh, moving on to you, Patrice, for introductions. Hi, I'm Patrice. Uh, I've uh, looked after the School of Infocom Technology uh, in Nian Polytechnic, and uh, I'm happy to be here today because it's a, it's a topic that is close to how we can best prepare our graduates for the cloud workforce that is required by so many industries out there. Hi, my name is Ian. Uh, so I run SG Code Campus, uh, which is a company I started in 2016. So uh, we now uh, coding school and we deal with uh, various audiences from seven years all the way up to working professionals. Uh, we recently did an event where we taught a 78-year-old grandmother, so very <laughs> <laughs> proud of that. Um, and we work with a variety of uh, educational institutions as well as big tech partners uh, and we've been an AWS authorized training partner since 2019. Okay, thanks. Um, hi. Uh, my name is Rong Hua, and I'm from Gulf Tech. Um, currently, as a part of a cybersecurity group, working on uh, security testing. Um, some people call white hat hacking, and uh, cyber product development as well as uh, program delivery. Yeah, and the reason why um, I'm interested to be here is because uh, uh, it's also part of our culture uh, for continuous learning. Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for your introductions. So perhaps we can get the discussion going. And uh, my first question is uh, to Ronghua from GovTech, actually, being an employer. Uh, can you give us a sense of uh, the cloud computing related roles that you are hiring uh, now, and also perhaps the trend over the past few years? Yeah, thanks, thanks very much, Danny, for uh, that question. Um, in fact, uh, when we first started over the past few years, especially like five years ago, it was extremely challenging. Yeah, and perhaps the number of uh, cloud expertise uh, uh, was very handful, I would say. Yeah, um, but I think we took a strategy of like, you know, um, uh, attracting some of the top talents so that we can leverage on them as a talent magnet uh, to attract more people uh, working together, right? And um, on top of that, um, we also provide scope that allows them to practice uh, some of their cloud skills to, uh, you know, uh, on meaningful projects. And um, some of the cloud roles that we do uh, varies. In fact, uh, Gulf Tech is quite broad, uh, do quite a wide spectrum of stuff. Uh, specifically, let's say, for example, in cybersecurity, we do a bit of like cloud-related security testing work and cloud development as well. Thanks. 
Also, can you give us some examples of uh, the specific roles that you are hiring for right now? Um, currently, uh, I'm looking for quite a number of like uh, desktop ops people, uh, cloud uh, pen testers, as well as uh, application developers. <laughs> okay, that's great. Thank you. Now, moving on to uh, Patrice. Uh, Patrice, you've been in the ICT education sector in a long time. Can you give us a, or share with us a bit more information on you know, what you've been doing over these years and how it has changed? Yes, thanks. Um, so I've been teaching uh, programming and uh, uh, producing ICT graduates for about 16 years now. And we've seen a big shift in the industry, especially in the last few years. Um, ICT industry is, is a very different industry as compared to other industries yeah, from a talent producing perspective. Uh, we produce talents in many verticals, but also horizontal as well. So we, our graduates go and work in hospitals because they use IT systems. They go and work in logistics because they use IT systems, in banks because they use IT systems. But we also have our own vertical in the sense that uh, the likes like GovTech, like uh, Microsoft, they also hire technology graduates. And when we have to cater to such a diverse groups of people, it is a struggle sometimes to find out what a technology to teach our students, what, what uh, platform to teach, or what kind of tools to use. Because each one of those industries, they have their own tools, they have their own platforms. And, and that has been a struggle, I would say, uh, to pick the right one, to make sure that our students are equipped and versatile enough so that they can move around industries if they want to um, and make sure that they, they become still, um, they are become career resilient as we move about all these industries. Yeah. Oh, it's interesting that you mentioned that. And in our previous discussions, you also say that uh, the, indus the industry is very different from the other courses uh, that, you, that are being taught. So how is, it, how is ICT different from the other industries? Yeah. So, because of this diverse profile of industries, it's horizontal and vertical, uh, and it's so fast changing uh, in ICT, um, the things come and go very fast. What we try to do is that when we develop a curriculum, we work very closely with the industry. So we have a panel of industry representative that we work very closely, that we run the curriculum through them to make sure that as we deliver the curriculum, that the content is always updated. And this is just to keep pace. And that's very unique to the way uh, tech is being taught. Uh, unlike you know, many other industries where maybe the pace where things change, the concept change or the regulation change is not as fast as ICT, for us it is imperative for us to work very closely with, uh, with the industry players to make sure our curriculum is always kept up to date. Thank you. Uh, now, moving on to Ian, I think Ian, you've got a very interesting background before you came into the education sector. I think you used to work for a European bank. Can you tell us a bit more about your journey and how you've ended up here? Sure, sure. Thanks for that. Uh, so, I actually worked at uh, Barclays Investment Bank uh, in 2011. I started there right after I finished uh, grad school in the, in the States at Stanford. Um, so, Barclays is actually a really great place to be as a young person beginning a career because it really immerses you with a lot of different people and very young, energetic um, peers, right? Uh, so while I was there, I had the good fortune of making a really good friend. Uh, his name is Edric. He leads uh, debt syndicate at Standard Chartered now. But right now, back then in 2012, 2013, we used to spend our weekends thinking about starting up uh, a tech company on the side. So we actually uh, bit the bullet and, and opened up a company called uh, Adaptic in 2013, um, to which the purpose of which was to essentially create a robo tutor for math in primary school students, which in 2022 is a bit of a passe idea, but in 2013 it was quite fresh. <laughs> um, but I think needless to say, it was quite difficult to run um, a startup uh, you know, on the site purely on the weekends. So we folded a company up in a year. But I think that really led the, you know, sow the seeds for what, um, for the interest and I guess my research into the education sector. So when I left in 2015 um, to start my own thing, that was where I naturally ended up starting out a training company. 
Nice. Yep. So thanks, Ian. And, and staying with you, can you share with us more about uh, the cloud computing related in-demand courses that you are currently teaching? Sure. So I, <laughs> our experience is a bit um, interesting because we actually started off with the uh, K-12 market, you know, your primary school, secondary school, and pre-U uh, markets. Um, so of late, uh, as recently as last year, we actually partnered up with the Infocom Media Development of Singapore, IMDA, as well as AWS, to run this National Data Science Accelerator program. So it's a nine month long program, uh, 110 hours, where we open it up to all uh, secondary schools and JCs in Singapore. Then we select about 100 uh, kids from a pool and uh, put them through the program. Then they work with a real live client. Last year it was Tampanis Town Council. Uh, and so at the end of the, uh, the program, the kids actually use their skills building deep learning models, machine vision models on AWS to work on an actual uh, real life problem. So uh, these are the problems that the town council experiences in managing the estate, like uh, how to catch people feeding cats, how to, uh, you know, to, to, to make sure that, they're not, that there aren't any flammable materials left in the void ducts of HDB flats. So that particular program um, was actually several times oversubscribed. So my sense is that if we, uh, if we can convince hundreds of kids to give up their weekends and holidays to learn about cloud computing and deep learning, then it definitely is an indicator that uh, you know, it's, it's probably an important uh, field that the wider sort of community is looking at. Yeah. Um, that, that's what we've been doing. In the adult space, we are more on the programming side of things, working with various partners and uh, skills future. So, so are you guys keeping up with the demand? Are you able to hire enough trainers? <laughs> yeah, I, I, interestingly, I think um, when, the, when the business was a pure kids business, this was prior to 2018, we did uh, struggle with um, hiring people because the Singapore enrichment market for kids is a very competitive market. Yeah. But ever since we became uh, Amazon uh, trading partners, as well as uh, in a similar situation for another big tech firm, um, we've been actually quite fortunate in that a lot of um, the trainers actually approach us because they want to be associated with those um, companies. And we've also been able to, the, the adult training market is really expanding and blowing up. So we've been able to give them sort of some uh, job security in the sense that there's a stream of gigs you nice. know, that, that, uh, that, that come through. So uh, it's been quite good, actually, the last two to three years. Nice, yeah. nice. Uh, and staying on the early careers uh, topic, uh, Ronghua, can you share a bit about you know, your cloud-related jobs in the early career space? Like, uh, what the application process is like? Uh, do you provide any sort of training for the first six months or so on? Is there a structured training program? Yeah, um, definitely. I think in, in terms of like the training, uh, we do uh, not just only for the new hires, but also for existing hires. And we strongly believe in you know uh, continuous learning, right? Because uh, especially in the tech space, uh, everything changes so fast. We have to uh, keep up to pace. So on our approach, we actually we look at uh, two prongs. Uh, first, we are um, sourcing for like you know external training opportunities as well as online courses as one of the sources. Uh, but in fact, uh, when we look at that, it helps us to bootstrap uh, baseline uh, capabilities or knowledge to help us learn more. And the second prong is, in fact, uh, where the folks uh, learn more advanced uh, techniques is through internal sharing. Because uh, very often the time, the more advanced as well as the emerging techniques are not well published. Uh, they can only be discovered as part of the uh, you know day-to-day uh, -day job discovery. So that is where we actually conduct uh, internal brow bags uh, to do exchanges, uh, where the the trainers also learn by training others, as well as the trainees also get to new, learn new insights to know where are the senpais. Yeah. So uh, that's uh, the two approach. Um, but last but not least, of course, uh, for uh, those who just join um, with uh, zero knowledge where to get themselves bootstrapped, we do have some baseline uh, SOPs as well as like training, uh, self-training materials uh, to get them kick-started. Yeah. Oh, that's great. So are you saying that uh, if someone does not necessarily have 
cloud computing knowledge they can still apply to these roles? Um, yes. Uh, in fact, um, perhaps uh, very specific to my uh, uh, organization, the, the, the division that I'm managing is actually more uh, focusing towards uh, security. So I think the baseline uh, uh, skill set that we are looking for focuses more on security. And with that, we learn other technologies, uh, not limiting to cloud, but also other uh, technologies, for example, like mobile apps uh, and uh, OT systems. Um, but the way that we look at it could be a little bit at different angle, uh, more coming from the angle of like reverse engineering, right. you know, trying to hack them and stuff. <laughs> right. What, uh, what about the selection process then? Do people have to take an aptitude test, a technical assessment, yeah. or you know, behavioral question, interviews, and so on like that? Yeah. Thanks very much for that question. Um, I think in terms of like the hiring process, uh, we minimally will conduct at two stages. Um, the first is to conduct a technical test. Because at the end of the day, uh, we want to make sure that the candidate uh, has the demonstrated capability on uh, having some skill sets that which we are looking out for, right? And that's the first. And as for the second, uh, we are looking uh, for the individual's motivation, right? As well as uh, their uh, personality, and see whether are they a uh, good fit into the team. Because at the end of the day. Um, our team serve a specific purpose and mission. We hope that you know that is uh, something that binds us together and build a community along the way. Yeah. All right. Thank you for sharing that, Ronghua. Uh, now moving on to Patrice. Uh, you know, you've said that education has changed uh, very much over the past few years. Um, so how is uh, Nian Polytechnic keeping up with these developments, and how is it working more closely with industry? Yeah, we we are doing so in several ways. Um, so recently, um, we've launched uh, what we call a, a one-year internship program, where the students have the option to spend the whole of their third year, which this is one-third of their whole diploma studies, in, in the industry. So we have, several, uh, we have signed several partnerships with several companies. Students apply to them, uh, and if they get accepted, then the students goes for internship for the whole of their third year. Now, we have, we've started this program about a year plus now, and we have some students who have come out from this program. And we do realize that this providing this flexibility at the end towards year three serves a certain segment of the population of the students well. Those who are um, ready to, to, to go to the industry and to start work, the, this increased exposure sets them well after they graduate. Uh, so that's one way. Uh, the other way is that we are working with partners like Amazon uh, and many others to see whether we can bring some of these certification curriculum within the diploma curriculum itself. Um, this provides a few advantages. One is uh, the curriculum is always refreshed as and when the certifications get refreshed. But most importantly, the students get to graduate, get to attempt an industry certification when they are 18 years old, right? They, after they finish their poly, not only they do have a polytechnic diploma, but they have also the opportunity to have attempted and passed, some of them, uh, these in this, the list of uh, industry certification that we offer. Uh, that serves our students well, both even if they go for further studies or if they choose to go to work. So certification, year-long industry partnerships, uh, that's two ways. And the third way perhaps I'll mention is that we focus on tackling real-world problem and assessment. So in some of our modules, what we try to do is we decouple the teaching, the concept teaching, uh, together with the assessment. So the teaching is done by us, the lecturers, but the assessment is done by the industry. So we form a panel of engineers to uh, give a problem a statement and then uh, assess the student on how well they have tackled that problem statement. So assessment by industry, but taught by the academics. So these are three ways I would say that we have changed the curriculum a little bit. Yeah. 
Oh, so quick question. Does the year-long internship lengthen the overall education in the polytechnic? The answer is no. Um, um, it's not, uh, we don't lengthen it. So what we do, what, what, what we did was to recognize one part of the internship, which is the additional six months, and we give it uh, curriculum credits, right? Uh, and that, uh, we make sure that uh, when the students goes on this extended internship, there are certain learning outcomes that the company is uh, kept to, and uh, will re receive commitment from the company to follow a certain uh, training plan, a project plan for the students to learn, and we can document this learning as well. We, we, take, we want to make sure that the, stu the students that goes out not only they have increased exposure and deepening in terms of their industry projects, but also uh, this not repeated learnings across the, the, the whole 12 months, but actually new learning that is happening. Oh, that, that's great. Um, so if there are employers in the audience as well as Rongha, how does an employer get in touch with Nian Polytechnic to participate in all, any of the three options that you've just mentioned? Oh, so we love to work with the industry. So if you guys are interested, uh, just hit me on LinkedIn or drop me an email. We will love to see how best we can uh, prepare and bring you into the fold of talent development. Uh, and in, in the area of ICT, I think it's very important that industry works with IHLs to ensure a proper pipeline of talents uh, that comes out. Yeah. Nice. So moving on to Ian, uh, as you've mentioned, you're getting into the adult learning space. Uh, can you share with us a bit more about you know, the cloud computing related courses that you are teaching and the in-demand roles? Yeah, sure, sure thing. So, um, so we've actually been working with uh, SMU Academy, which is the continuing, in education, uh, continuing education and training arm of the Singapore Management University. Uh, we've been teaching uh, courses in Python, data analytics, machine learning, deep learning since 2019. So these are the uh, pretty long form uh, certificate programs that are at least 90 hours in duration. So the deep, the deep programs. Um, and recently, we've gotten into a partnership with AWS and SMU to bring a new 90 hour certificate program in cloud computing on AWS. So we're launching that in uh, February of 2023. And we started marketing it maybe about a couple weeks ago. And so far, the demand's been quite robust, so I'm quite excited about that. Um, so in terms of the in-demand skills, I would say cloud computing is the obvious one. <laughs> but I also um, would like to give this sort of like my unique view working with, with adult learners is that uh, I get the sense that the adjacent pillars are quite important as well. So uh, mobile programming uh, attracts quite a big audience. Um, interestingly, I see that um, that people are getting into specific platforms like for iOS or for Android, you know, um, and uh, not so much in the, uh, the so-called cross-platform type uh, mobile programming. Uh, data science, machine learning, for sure. Uh, data analytics seems to have quite a big uh, draw simply because the job opportunities are quite vast. You're, just not, you're not just limited to the um, sort of tech sector, even banks. Um, have reporting roles that are also called, you know, also called for data analysts. So these are kind of like the trends that I see uh, in our experience working with adult learners. Oh, so I'm curious as well. Uh, does your team get involved in helping those that have gotten these certifications a job? Definitely. So I think the the curious um, trend for us is that we started off being a K-12 education provider, but the adult side has overtaken the kid side about a couple years ago, and continues to grow. Um, so I think in light of that, we've decided that we need to provide a better service to help our learners sort of get to the goals that they want to reach. So if you go to our, our website, you'll see that I now have a human uh, capital consultant. So uh, her name's Linda. She actually specializes in helping uh, our learners through to um, just low-hanging fruit, right? A lot of these mid-career uh, career switches have not had an interview in 10, 20, 30 years, wow. right? And uh, their resumes haven't been updated in a period of time. So, so I think, you know, th th these are things that you can address very quickly, like in a day session, you, you do a bit of career counseling, interview prep, and we find that, that that's, that's a meaningful way to sort of 
address that because uh, we ultimately an education company, so we, we can't, we, we don't have the cap capability to actually place um, people into actual jobs. Yeah, but uh, that's what we do. Yeah, it's actually interesting that you are doing that. Uh, is it a paid uh, uh, or a fee attached to it? No, it's a it's it's a it's a service we provide on the side, so that keeps our you know our uh, learners happy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actually it was a nice uh, segue into certification. Yep. So I actually like to ask uh, Ronghua, how do you uh, feel about certification? And uh, is there uh, any way uh, for you as an employer to identify talent through not only the three or four year degrees that you get, but also if they come with certification, do they get uh, sort of like bumped up to the top of the uh, resume power and so on. Does it help, you know, in terms of uh, cutting short the interview process and so on if they come with certification? Um, yeah, that's very interesting. Um, I would say that when how we look at certification is uh, it serves as an endorsement of the baseline understanding of certain subject. But however, this doesn't mean that the person is well skilled uh, in their practice. Right, so uh, we also uh, you know, use it uh, uh, in a very nuanced way. Right? So how we actually look at the candidate is, um, typically my, the way I ask the question is, tell me what are some of your strengths and where are the areas of expertise you think that you're best at? And given the fact that uh, I'm not as good, supposedly, as him, I will ask uh, more questions on those areas. And especially if those are in the area that he claims to be certified and to be very good, uh, that is where I will you know, try to understand a little bit more about their strength. Yeah, and if it turns out well, then that's great. But even without certification, it doesn't also matter because uh, uh, learning is always a process. Right? We are looking for uh, people with uh, learning agility. Right? Uh, let's say, for example, if uh, one has demonstrated you know, uh, able to take charge of their own learning, you know, uh, spend their... Uh, you know, uh, uh, free time, trying to, to discover more, learn more. I think that's where we are looking at. And certification can come at a later stage. Yeah, yeah speaking of certification at a later stage, uh, if someone or an employee of the organization is interested to pursue certification, are there any forms of support that the organization gives to the individual? Definitely, definitely. Uh, I, I can't say for all the organization, uh, I feel very grateful to be part of Gulf Tech. And it's sort of like, you know, uh, we are aligned in uh, the mindset of continuous learning. So therefore, I think uh, uh, Gulf Tech supports us um, quite a fair bit in terms of our learning opportunities. So certification included, yeah. Nice. And uh, because uh, certification is quite close to my heart, uh, the honest truth is that I used to be a recruiter uh, for AWS uh, about five years ago. And truth is, uh, when I see someone with certification, it immediately bumps the <laughs> candidacy to the top of the pile. And uh, because it's something close to my heart, I would like to, the views of Patrice and Ian as right. well. So maybe uh, perhaps, uh, Patrice, can you tell us, you know, in addition to the kind of polytechnic diplomas that you issue, you know, what is your view on industry certification? Perhaps not just uh, related to AWS, but other sorts of uh, skills and industry certification as well. Yes, um, I think in the IT industry, and I would say it's different from industry to industry, uh, but in the IT industry, certification is a good way, like what Ronghua mentioned, to signal competence. Huh? Mm. It's a signaling of competence. It's not, a, it's not confirmed uh, the person will have it still have to go on the testing, but it is a good way to signal to the employers that you, have in, you are interested in this field, you have studied this field, and you claim to have certain level of competence in this field, right? Of course, it is the employer's uh, duty to then assess that particular competence now. Uh, because of this signaling uh, is in such a, such a, so important in the ICT industry, we try to include certification as part of the curriculum. Mm. It is a double-edged sword because if we include it too tightly, um, then we are a little bit restricting our agility in shaping the curriculum with moving times because we do realize that uh, companies and industries uh, also changes across, across time. Uh, but at the same time, while we keep some flexibility in the curriculum, we also want to 
provide an opportunity for our students to provide the signaling of competence uh, to employ. Mm. So definitely it's a good plus for us, for our students, yeah. Yeah, so you mentioned that you encourage students, they want to get industry certification, but what about, um, you know, competing time with pursuing your diploma type studies and projects and as well as industry certification? Do they, do you perhaps give them some time out or provide resources that help, you know, these students to attain their uh, certification perhaps uh, more quickly than yeah. normally? Um, so we, what we do, we provide we do two things. One is, if a curriculum of a certification is uh, to some uh, in th this big, we carve some portion to be studied within the curriculum. So there's some time saving here. And then what we do is we provide a bridging class for the rest so that they can take the certification after. So they save a little bit of time because some of the curriculum is taught within class, uh, within the curriculum time. But some of them is an optional bridging class they take just before they go for the exam. Nice. And thanks finally over to you, uh, Ian. What is your view on certification? Oh, so I think I'll answer this uh, with an anecdote. <laughs> so uh, for, for us, uh, I mean, we are an AWS authorized training partner. So one of the policies in the company is that we try to get everybody certified, even on the business and operation side of things. Um, and so a lot of our trainers are now at certified at associate level at, in the various sort of pillars that are in AWS. Um, and I kid you not, like in the past three months, I've had maybe two to three times where different uh, employees and trainers have come up to me and said, hey Ian, uh, yeah, so somebody, uh, a company is hit me up on LinkedIn and said, I noticed you're now a solutions architect. Uh, and would you like to come in for an interview? And I, no, 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 I don't want to leave SG Co campus, but I think you should know. <laughs> like, okay, <laughs> that's great. So I think, um, jokes aside, um, I, I think what, that, that to me, I think is, if, if the industry is specifically looking right, for these skill sets and certifications and signals of quality, yep. then that is a very strong indicator that these things are important. Yeah, uh, and of course creates new HR issues for people like me. <laughs> but yes, um, yeah, I definitely do think it's important. Yeah. Right, thanks for that perspective. Um, I also want to keep this uh, conversation current to the times that we are in. So I was uh, also wondering on the side of Ronghua, like given you know, the economic uh, activity slow down with inflation, uh, are you going to see a reversal in trend perhaps, or maybe not, in terms of the cloud computing roles that you are hiring? Yeah, um, so maybe I'll just share a generic thought about uh, good time, bad times. So in good times, we need talents. Uh, in bad time, the more we need talents. And the reason is because uh, we need to be more efficient and more effective about how we do things and do things, right? And on that note, uh, we look for people who are not just uh, technically competent, but also having the ability to interpret intent uh, on uh, what exactly the team is trying to achieve. And that's where we are looking at the proactive individuals who can help each other to pull up the slacks and move on together as a team. Yeah. Okay, so we are the, perhaps uh, uh, due to time, we are at the end of our sure. uh, conversation. And I would like to ask each of you actually, uh, if you can share an anecdote or if you can share some tips of you know, how uh, someone is looking for a career in cloud computing, what is perhaps your top tip uh, for someone who is pursuing a career in that direction? Maybe right. starting with you, yeah. Um, let certification be your starting point. <laughs> Don't let it be your end goal. The end objective should be continuous learning. Thank you. Yep. So in the spirit of like, uh, looking at mid-career switches, since we're working with that group now, I'd say that certification has a different, uh, has a different uh, side to it as well. I think it allows um, if the switch to a career is not urgent, it gives you the ability to sort of play around in a sandbox and to mm. see what the field's really about. You know, I think, um, I, of course, our experience, we've met some career switches that were maybe quite impulsive in <laughs> doing the switch, and then you might end up in a situation where the new career is not where you want to be. So I think, I think there's also an element of risk management here, right? Find out about the field that you want to get into before you take the plunge. 
And for me, I would say that uh, if you are looking to switch careers, uh, switching careers is a very difficult thing. Uh, about three in 10 succeed only in switching careers. But I think for coming to the technology sector, uh, if you guys are keen, then lifelong learning is uh, imperative here in this sector. Continuous learning. I think for everyone in tech here, I'm, sh I'm sure that learning runs through our veins because things always change. And whether it's cloud computing or whether it is another technology tomorrow, Web3 or some other technologies, the learning will always be. So have a, the curious mindset will be very important. Yeah. Absolutely. Right, thank you very much. I think we've managed time uh, pretty well. Uh, so just a closing uh, remark to all of you. Uh, if you've got any questions on certification, on education, on training, uh, please visit our Education to Workforce booths and our training and certification booths. They are on my right-hand side. And I will also be, and perhaps some of the panelists uh, will be there as well for some time. So um, we're looking forward to seeing you and interact with you at the booths over there.